Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're going to be investigating that cluster of neurodegenerative patients, including a lot of unusually younger patients in New Brunswick, Canada. Also, quick reminder, I am not Canadian, though a lot of people think I am for some reason. And I wanted to cover this because even though there's been a pretty huge sweep of this through the media from the CBC to Vice and The Guardian, there's been some exposure of how it seems to be not perfectly handled by the government, to put it lightly, but also that there's one potential cause here that has not been talked about enough, though it has been mentioned occasionally, and we're going to investigate that. And in this video, I'm gonna be making the case for that potential cause, the whole line of reasoning for it with research and so forth. But I do wanna mention that the plant-based bundle is pretty much over. Again, we're talking about $4,000 worth of books and guides for just 50 bucks. You know, what else is worth $4,000? It's like a used car. Anyway, it's completely gone January 9th, which is very soon from when I'm filming this at 11 a.m. West Coast time. Anyway, link below, it supports me a lot and hopefully gives you some info that will help you on your journey. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so background for this cluster, we're talking about 50 people with various neurodegenerative symptoms. Nine people have actually died. And for those that aren't aware, this is where New Brunswick is in the world. I know US geography isn't the best. Think of it as like Maine's Maine. There's another thing over there. Anyway, the memo of this was apparently leaked from the government and I don't usually get really conspiracy-ish, but there's definitely some things that I at least need to mention about how the government is handling this later on in the video. But I do wanna make a clarification from the headlines. It can seem like this is only happening in young people. It's happening in an unusual amount of young people, though the average age is like between 50 and 60. Now some people are as young as 18 and it's just not fitting a box of like Parkinson's or ALS exactly and New Brunswick only has, you know, under a million people. So this is strange. And from Dr. Marrero, a neurologist, quote, it's totally unexpected to have any of this at this young age and this many people in a small province and in small areas of a small province. As this article mentions, the symptoms are pretty wide ranging from severe muscle atrophy and involuntary movements, brain atrophy demonstrated on MRIs and dementia ataxia. And to the CBC article, one example, quote, once an enthusiastic outdoor adventure seeker, Taraline, Taraline Perel now bumps into walls and doors making her way around the house. But now let's get to my main theory, the one that immediately came to mind for me and also viewer and friend Sarah who sent me the article originally, and that is BMAA, the neurotoxin from cyanobacteria. For those that have not seen my older video on this, it bioaccumulates up the food chain in particular into seafood and is a neurotoxin, a cyanotoxin in particular. It's a protein. It's something that can cause a wide range of neurological symptoms. And back to Perel, the woman who is bouncing off her walls, quote, we know it's not cancer. We know it's not Parkinson's. We know it's not ALS. But this brings me back to what happened to Guam in the 40s and 50s where they had an outbreak of Lytico Bodig disease, which is also referred to as ALS Parkinsonism dementia because of the wide breadth of symptoms that overlapped into all of those areas, but it wasn't any of those specifically. Essentially, the people of Guam had got guns for the first time and they ended up shooting down all of the flying foxes, which were getting higher levels of BMAA from eating all the cycad nuts that had BMAA, and then they ended up with really high levels and it was the leading cause of death for a decade. And I don't believe that BMAA's effects are limited to Guam, as I discussed in my previous video. Looking at some samples of seafood off the coast of Florida, they are right in the realm of what was detected in those flying foxes of Guam. So this isn't something that just went away. And I have to mention, this isn't just vegans like me being like, oh, every problem is somehow vegan related. No, looking to this Canadian professor who is an expert in BMAA, the protein and its effects, from the Walrus, which is just a great name for a news outlet. She was actually contacted by the authorities initially to look into BMAA as a possibility. We're gonna get more to that in a second, but I gotta do some more background on BMAA. I wanna outline this connection between BMAA and neurological diseases in particular, how it might be contributing to not just the Guam disease, but also ALS in general. A, we have those clusters of people with ALS around lakes, possibly from eating that local fish. And also Lou Gehrig, it's called Lou Gehrig's disease. He apparently loved various seafood dishes. 
that's an anecdote, but it would have been really interesting to just take samples of the seafood that he was eating. We can't do that, but looking to a case of somebody with ALS where they actually cracked open the refrigerator and took samples of the lobsters that were in there. They found concerning levels of BMAA as well as another related neurotoxin called DAB or DAB. Don't do dabs, kids. But that's just a point about ALS. Let's go back to this cluster here. And it appears that one of those patients, Roger, as his son recalled, there are various factors in his father's life that might offer clues such as his occupation at a mine, his diet, which included a fair amount of seafood and his upbringing and home near the water. Obviously these younger people and all 50 of these people were not working at a mine at some point in their life, but it is likely that they were all or at least virtually all consuming pretty large amounts of seafood. I mean, I was just in Maine this summer and everybody was obsessed with lobster that is just right next door. And shout out to the lobsters for getting some credit for feeling pain, which they do, officially recognized from the UK government. And you might be thinking, but cyanobacteria is a problem when it blooms. And yeah, you're talking about this guy in Florida, but what about Canada, which is further north? It needs warmer waters and stuff. Well, it turns out that most tragically, three doggos actually passed away a couple years back from going in the St. John's River in New Brunswick. So clearly there are high levels there as well in the summer. And from the Conservation Council of New Brunswick, quote, experts say that climate change, warming waters, heavier rainfalls, is also contributing to the bacteria's growth. This might be why it's all been noticed in the last decade. We're talking about those warming waters, those fish and other seafood are able to get their sort of yearly summer dose of BMAA to bioaccumulate. And we actually see warnings from the local authorities and boom, here, is a picture of that green nasty water. Also from the Conservation Council, although blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, occurs naturally, a bloom can also be triggered by pollution in a body of water such as phosphorus, that common nutrient. With the first source of phosphorus being listed as, quote, runoff from large-scale farming operations, manure and fertilizers that are nutrient-rich and contain phosphorus can make their way into our rivers and lakes. Most of you already know this. Immediately, a lot of people who want to deny this might be going, oh, human poop though. Well, from this government paper, at least in the US, livestock are creating 130 times as much waste as the human population. I'm sure Canada is very similar. And if you're curious about the livestock in New Brunswick, roughly 40 to 50% is dairy, which create a ton of waste. The other livestock creates a lot of waste as well. And I quickly went on Google Maps and looked on the St. John's River, oh, where the doggos unfortunately passed away, and I sh you not, pun intended, zoomed into a random part of the river and found a large scale farming operation. Those are grain feeders. And yes, people are eating fish out of this river. I mean, from this outdoor-y page. They say it's one of the best places in the country for angling. In previous videos, I've made the case for why livestock poop is likely the leading cause of dead zones across the world, but it doesn't have to be a full dead zone in order to cause harm. In this case, it's just feeding blooms, which then create a toxic environment and bioaccumulation over time. And we have to ask, has anything like this happened in this area before? And yes, to their neighbors on Prince Edward Island, they saw an outbreak of neurodegeneration from mussels, in particular, a neurotoxin called domoic acid, which is from a bloom in a particular algae called Pseudonychia australis. Sounds like a bunch of Australians just floating around pretending to be the philosopher Nietzsche. There are no beautiful surfaces without a terrible depth. Not pretty appropriate for down here, eh? Hey, shrimp, where you going? The Bobby can also accumulate in sardines and anchovies, those smaller fish, which are allegedly super clean. Anyway, of course, it becomes hazardous to consume various seafood and, and higher exposure can cause irreversible memory loss known as amnesic shellfish poisoning. People falsely say that fish have a memory of 30 seconds. Well, if you eat those fish, you're probably not even gonna have that long of a memory. I also just cracked another larger mystery here. As to why Dory from Finding Nemo had such a horrible memory, just eating too much of this algae. And in this hellscape known as industrial modern animal agriculture, it appears that people might even need to be concerned about BMAA in chicken that were fed mussels. And then of course, other farmed fish that were fed those mussels as well. And I have to address another angle really quickly here. And that is the first one that I thought of as well, which is 
Could it be a post-COVID situation? We're seeing a lot of neurological situations with people who have that condition. It doesn't match up in virtually all cases. I mean, this started in 2013. However, people have it as late as the summer of 2020, which means they could have had an undiagnosed COVID situation. That could actually be giving some different symptoms here. That could be throwing a red herring, completely pun intended on the seafood topic here, into the mix, throwing people off. But the son of one such man in the cluster who died in 2019, which couldn't have been COVID, was calling for the government to do that BMAA test. From The Guardian, quote, I don't know why the province wouldn't just simply do the science and look. They have my dad's remains. We've given them full permission to do the toxicology and do what needs to be done, yet nothing has been looked at. Now, in terms of the government, this brings me to two possibilities. One is just negligence. There have been reports of not very many hours being put onto this investigation. And then two, that it could be a cover-up. Let's just have some fun and pretend it's a cover-up for a second. Back to Susan Merch, the BMAA specialist. They had reached out to her talking about getting things tested and then they just appeared to have ghosted her. The motive for stopping that is that they have what is approaching a billion dollar seafood export business in New Brunswick. It's about a fifth of all of Canada's seafood export. And so if it became public that there was a contamination issue in New Brunswick with seafood, then it could be detrimental to the economy. They could have either purposefully not found out or found out through another channel that BMAA was the issue and then just tried to sort of snuff that concern out. But it is clear that they knew about a potential BMAA connection, were concerned about it, and then took measures by reaching out to Susan Merch. Speaking of merch, check out my merch down below. I just couldn't resist the pun. But I want everybody to just feel free to relax because, quote, Health Minister Dorothy Shepard said the results showed there is no reason to believe there is something in the environment that is linked to the illness, based off not testing. Her last name is Shepard. That's related to livestock. It's all connected. I'm losing it. I'm just kidding, but it does appear that there's supposed to be a report released on this sometime in January, so it should be coming out relatively soon so we can keep our eyes peeled for that. They need to at least cross this off. Why would they not cross this off? But whether it is BMAA or domoic acid, there is a high level of seafood consumption in that area, in New Brunswick, where, as I have demonstrated, there have been higher levels of cyanobacteria, enough to kill the doggos, which is a crime unto itself. We also have the livestock industry there. I mean, right next to that river, as I showed you, we can see a large scale farm. And finally, there's that similarity to lytico bodig disease in terms of how it could sort of look like Parkinson's and ALS here and there, but then doesn't actually show up as that officially when neurologists look at it. But I just want to put this into perspective, zoom out here, because it's a bit of a one-two punch of animal consumption. You can get poisoned because you want to eat an animal, in this case a fish, because people also wanted to eat land animals, which happened to poop a lot, and then poison the fish. It's the cycle. It's the cycle of life that all of those meat eaters are always talking about. More like the cycle of poop, another reason that you probably shouldn't be eating anything or anyone that poops. Anyway, once again, <laughs> the bundles, last time I'm gonna mention the bundle is uh, linked below $4,000 worth of a bunch of good stuff, including my own ebook for $50. It's, I you know it's about to expire. Anyway, feel free to let me know down below what you think about all of this. If you are from New Brunswick and you have any insights that'll be of particular interest and feel free to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. <laughs>